Okay, big balling. No, it's our friend. It's our friend's birthday. You know what I mean? He's 40, and I think that's a milestone. So he just have fun, I guess. I hear you. Enjoy your oil money and your steak and all that. Okay, listen. Hey, I sleep, man. It's okay. We're going to wake him up this year, though. We're going to wake him up this year. I think Oxy made that big move because Warren Buffett on Friday or something like that. Warren Buffett got into Oxy or is he still holding the main? I know he was holding the main. He got into Oxy. I know he's been holding the main since last year, too. He got into Oxy apparently this week or added more shares, something like that. I was reading about it. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it did 17%. That was a big, huge move. I'm surprised. I mean, y'all remember Oxy was $25. We've been literally trading $25 costs from Oxy for forever. I mean, this is crazy. You see all my Oxy levels? Like, Oxy was literally $16 to $25. Once it got above 33 it just went crazy. But, I mean, hopefully somebody caught it. I mean, I don't, I don't try to put out too much. I mean, I'm trying to keep a little balance. But I don't know. I may just start putting out a whole bunch of stuff, man. I don't know, man. I'm 50-50, I'm so. Um... Let me see, make sure we straight. All right, yeah, we're recording this Sunday session for September, uh, March 6th. Um, <clears throat> I got the baby with me today too. So she's sitting right here on my desk and she's so little. Um, but yeah, man, I'm excited to be here with you guys today. Ladies yes, and so. Huh? How's it going, how's it going? What's up, what's up, man? um sunday session happy to be here man got a lot of information to cover today um a lot of things changed in one week but we hopefully you guys took advantage of some of the things that's been making big moves um so we definitely got to go over a lot of different things for today first thing we're going to do make sure you guys got your notebooks notepads whatever you need to be able to set alerts for the week at price ranges. Um, I wanna be able to simplify this stuff as much as possible without no complications. So please, hopefully you guys came prepared. Um, we got a lot of things we gotta talk about. We got a lot of things we gotta talk about. Um, first thing first, looking back at last week, you see that tech been getting beat down um finance financial banks all that stuff again be down oil walmart actually did a nice little move um so i'm excited about walmart um <clears throat> you see that you know the healthcare sector is kind of picking up a little bit but overall i posted an article on in the main lobby about the uh earnings coming up this week we got crowd strike docusign oracle um coming out this week uh, it's a big week also again in earnings um let's see how these things go uh, but again when you're trading these earnings you really want to trade the run up before the earnings and not the day of because you never know how it's going to react so let's see what happened um with this week we definitely got a lot of potential to be able to make money <clears throat> off the oil stocks Gold stocks, wheat stocks, corn stocks, whatever stock you really get comfortable with, you know, that makes a nice move. You could take advantage of it. Please do not get caught not <clears throat> in, into the right trade at the right time. The, the market's still fickle with the war and all that stuff that's going on, but we're making the best of it. So let's see what we got so far. First thing we're going to look at is SPY. Uh, talk about some levels on SPY real quick. Um, it definitely has not really, you know, held below the four, uh, the 427. Let's go to the four hour chart real quick. We definitely haven't really, you know, <clears throat> got below, back below that 427 like we did, you know, weeks before when it came down to 410. So we definitely starting to see a bounce every time it come down to about 428. You see it bounce back up to about 432, 431. And it's a gap right here all the way up from 432. Or oh, it's about 436. Um, Again, you know, we got to pick up on this, you know, sideways movement in between here. If it comes down about 429, you know, 428, 
That's a good area to buy in. It's been doing that consistently. We see it over here back on the first. Um, so let's pay attention to these areas. If you're trading SPY, tr this is your trading zone between the 431, all the way up to about 435, 436. Um, you know, 437 been a hard resistance also, but just to be safe, you really want to try to get you a 435 around, you know, 428 and 429. So let's see what we got with SPY for the week. I'm not putting out no trades on a Sunday on SPY because you never know how it may open up. But <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. If we break back below that 427 area, let's get back into them 415 puts because we may have some downside. But until then, we see the sideways movement in between here. So let's take advantage of these short-term trades for the SPY. Um, if that's if you're into SPY, we are every week doing day trades and whatever you want to do. So um, let's see how that goes throughout the week. The next thing on the list, let's go back to the Sunday session list. And we got some more stuff we got to cover. Uh, first thing, let's go back down the same trades that we capitalized off of on Wednesday. I put out some, some trades on XOM. Um, with the oil prices, I think we all are being affected by the prices of oil which is pretty obvious that we should be trading oil right now because when you go out there and buy any type of gas, it's costing you $4 in Florida for regular. I know in other states, it's probably up to 5 and $6 right now. Um, but I, And I also posted up a chart um, yesterday on crude oil charting um, that oil is back at its all-time high from way back in you know 2008. Uh, so you look at the one-week chart again. This is 2008. Um, oil was at its all-time high at almost $150 a barrel. Now you're starting to see it break all the way down, and now we're working our ways back back up above those prices, hopefully. Um, the resistance back in... Julia, Julia. The resistance is around was around the 109, and we're at the 115 on the crude oil charting. So it does look like it's going to have a nice continuation this week. So make sure if you got your oil trades lined up, be patient because of the oil is making a huge move. The RSI is kind of high, so you may be able to see some downside. So the oil trade that I put out was uh, XOM um, because I felt like XOM was cheap. But once it gets moving, you can make a lot of money off of these contracts. Um, if anybody got into the $83 calls, I mean, there was the lowest eight cents. I seen something that was actually two cents for the $83 call for the weekly or day trade. And they cashed out on Friday around $115. So please, I know a lot, of, I said this on Thursday, I said a lot of people are going to be looking at these oil trades and be like, ah, I'm not touching it, oil's not running. And then the next day, you know, oil takes off and then hopefully, you know, people took heed on what I was saying. But you had an opportunity when oil is around that $77 area. Um, <clears throat> let's go look at the 15 minute chart real quick. We noticed that it was literally around 79, you know, $80. It was going to sideways movement in between here. And then once it broke above the 81, that became the resistance. And then it just took off. Um, so please, if you're not into it now, if you're not in that $83 call from this week that's coming up, wait for it to come back down to around 82. If it does come down, then maybe you can take advantage of the $85 call for 318 that I put out also around with that 83. So <clears throat> either way, if you're in it, um, you got you know at least one week on the $83 call and two weeks on the $85 call, you should be up above 200% on those. But if you're not, be patient for the RSI to come down and then you'll be able to get, I'll put out a $100 call for the end of the month because I really think we're gonna break this 84. And we're going to have a nice continuation going up towards the 88 and the 86 and blase, blase. But again, even if you want to get the $100 call for 414 or for 325, you have to wait for it to cool off with this RSI. Let it come down just a little bit. It may, I mean, we may see 83 and then hopefully we break below 83, we can get to 82 again. But either way, it's going to have to come down before it goes back up. Don't be surprised tomorrow oil have a gap up because all the things is happening if you have a gap up it's certainly going to come down so let's pay attention to oil for sure um these trades are hot um a lot of volume coming in for these oil trades xom is the one that i do if you guys like whatever you like you know let's have a conversation let's look at their charts and we can go through there but 
I'm looking at the ones that got the most volume, the highest uh, volatility, because those are the ones that are going to get, get you a lot of money. I don't want to really look for randoms. I want to find them popular ones. I want it because this is a hot topic. This is a hot situation right now. I don't want to really go off the topic and find randoms. I just want to find something that's got a lot of volume, a lot of IV, so we can be able to make a lot of money once it starts moving. So let's see how I go from here. But again, these contracts turned out to be a thousand percent on Friday. So that was crazy. I'm very excited about what XOM is going to do for us this week. Um, another one I, you know, put out there because I'm seeing a trend break is Walmart. Walmart breaking trend at 142. Um, we broke above the 141.23, resistance above the 143.35, target is 146.35. I'm thinking now that we're above the 141.23, we can start looking at the 150 calls. Uh, RSI is, is in a good position. Um, if you go down to the one week, you'll see the, the overall trend is kind of changing a little bit. So, you know, we definitely may have start seeing some more upside, a, a better move out of Walmart. I know we've been in and out of Walmart since last year, October. Um, but now, you know, here go that trend line here. We're barely breezing right over that trend line right now. So let's see how this goes, but it looked like Walmart want more. So let's see if we start pushing towards that 146.35. So the 150 call can work for 318, um, especially if we starting to hold above this um, the 143. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna be paying attention to this one for sure. I know we've been in, in and out of Walmart for a little minute now. Um, but we're not, you know, again, just being patient, just looking around. I just want to look around. A Walmart been beat down for a long period of time, but you see um, from last year to the bottom around 129, really haven't <laughs> really down to that 129, been hanging out around 133 and 135. <laughs> then we get this huge green bullish engulfing on the one week. So we definitely should be able to see some more movement coming in from Walmart um, off of this big, huge candle coming in. So, I'm looking at Walmart also just to capitalize off of the, the trend line move. And then we'll be able to see some upside coming up soon from out of Walmart. So very excited about that, man. Definitely, you know, been, been playing that one up and down. So um, one more, you know, that again, you know, I'm looking for high volume trades. I'm looking for high volatility trades. I'm looking for the ones that everybody's getting into and capitalizing off of. Um, so this is CLF. This is CLF. Um, you notice again, we put CLF out around $21. CLF had a clear breakout and their all time high is $26.50. Um, now that if we break above, I put out a $23 call, very simple, 318, $23 call. Um, it was cheap, but now of course it's, it's a little bit more expensive. Now that we're three, that we're deep off in the money on these. Um, the target was, you know, $24 some change, but now we're breaking above that 24. Now we got to make adjustments for the people that hasn't got that that's not in it. Let's find you guys a trade. Um, I'm looking at $30, $32 and $35 call for CLF for 414. Because I feel like once you go to that one week, you see that all time high. This is the, the third test. Um, from 2021, you know what I mean, you see it ran up to $26.50. Then it ran on last year, you know, uh, November, it ran up to about $26 again. I think we caught that trade and then now it's doing it again. If we break above this, you got to go all the way back until 2012, uh, 2013 and start figuring out, you know, the movement from CLF. So we're definitely looking for a break above this 2650. This can be all time high break where we can really, really take advantage of something huge here. Um, congrats if you guys are in the $23 cost because I'll definitely put out at a great time. Um, but now we got to look forward to the 30, 32s and 35s. These are, you know, reasonably priced contracts. I'm not hitting you across the head with super expensive stuff. But again, these contracts of CLL 23s, um, I got mine is about 26, 27 cent. It was cashing out about 300, um, $400. So let's see how this go. Uh, these are big contracts. Once it start moving, um, this, this is ranked top 10 in, you know, uh, option volume on Friday. 
Um, but we put it out, you know, a little bit earlier. So you had a whole week to be able to capitalize off of this one. Um, but, you know, here we go. We're here now. So above 2650, all time highs. You know, we're looking for a nice move. Hopefully we'll be able to capitalize off of it. Um, and then we'll be able to keep it moving. So let's see how that go. Um, anybody got questions about CLL? I really like the CLL trade. I'm not even going to lie. I mean, I think that's going to be a huge trade. That's why I put a lot of little bit of information in there. Um, but I think this is going to be huge. CLF is a great company. It was introduced to us last year around $11 um, by uh, one of our members. Ever since then, I've been in and out, you know, make, making trades off of it, doing a small calls. But everybody who remember, you know, when I did the $23, $24, $25 calls last year, when it ran up to 26 those came out to be 1,000% plays. And, you know what I mean? It's just been really, really, really working in our favor. Uh, for CLF. That's why I went right back to it, noticing that the overall downtrend is breaking on the one week. Um, and now we're getting new highs that's coming in for recent. So look for this 2650 to break. This can be huge. This can be huge. I'm not gassing you guys. I want you guys to understand why I'm talking about these companies because I'm starting to see companies is breaking all time highs. That has a lot more room to go. I'm not looking for companies that's already at its all time high where you can't really got not a lot of room to capitalize off the trade. So being early is the best thing and when you're into trading. And we're definitely early on a lot of different trades. Hopefully we can take advantage of being early. But, you know, again, pay attention. This 2650 is crucial. This is the one week chart. This is when it hit it the first time, second time. Then you start seeing that trend starting to break down, higher lows. Now you're starting to see this big green candle come in on the last week. It ran from $21 to $26. It don't sound like a lot, but when you have $30 and you, you cashing out with three, $400, that's a lot. You know what I mean? So please pay attention to this for sure. Um, but uh, let's go. Let's, 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 let's see. Let's see. Above this 2650 can be beautiful. Um, what else we got going on? Oh, gold. Um, I'm just going back over the same stuff because I feel like these still got room to go. Um, we talked about gold 180 cars, um, what, two weeks ago, probably now. Uh, and that's when the price was, you know, fairly low. But the reason I put out the gold call was just simple stuff. It was at one, it ran up to 182 the week before I put the call out. Reason is whenever you see a, a, any type of stock have a big gap up here, it usually comes to fill the gap. Hold on. Hey, yeah. So it usually comes to fill the gap and it go retest that high. Um, this is, you know, seeing it at 176 after it's peaked all the way up to 182 on the week of the 24th, that's a huge advantage that gave, that gave us an opportunity. I didn't want to, you know, put the call out when it was at 182, you know? You see the big red candle coming in. I'm giving you guys the opportunity to get in at these good support areas, which was 176. Um, and, and I reiterated again when it came up to about 179. So I'm giving you guys multiple opportunities for some of these same trades, but these contracts are all up over 200% a piece. Um, even if, no matter which one you got, literally the 190s is up 150%. Um, the regular gold. Hey, hey, David, what's that blue line there? The way you that no, that one. Come down. The way you have uh that chat box is called here. There's a line there. He bounced on that line. Oh, the the, the moving average. Yeah, that's the fifty day. Nice. Yeah. But you know. Um. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely. <laughs> This had the most volume coming in on Friday. You know, people are starting to pay attention now because it broke above the 182. I'm giving you the trade at 176. Now everybody's buying the trade on Friday. It was at 182. That's not for no reason. Everyone's seen the resistance. So people probably got in at the bottom and just added on to their contracts here. And now a break above 185 is going to give us that 186 which is obviously the all-time high, but, you know, gold is at its all-time high. Gold is at its all-time high. This is back in, you know, last year. It ran up around August. 
Um, this is back in 2011. We're back around that 2011 price range, you know, 185, 186. So I'm definitely paying attention to this one. Uh, Cam posted something from the cheddar thing that the $200 cost is coming. But I, you know, I, I, I looked and seen what, what everybody was buying. I'm just going by that because above 185, I, I looked at the $200 call, 318. Um, but hopefully you guys got into the 180s uh, or the 190. I mean, whatever, you know, I'm just here, guys, for the Sunday session. I hopefully people are taking advantage of these trades. Um, gold is a huge topic. We had articles getting posted about Russia buying oil with gold or, you know, China buying oil with gold. I mean, these are huge things that's going on around the world. You got to expect gold to become a, a huge commodity with the war going on. So this is it. This is it, man. We're getting to all time highs. So let's watch these next levels. If you're not in it, um, just be patient. Be patient. RSI on the one week still sitting pretty good. Um, let's look at the 15 real quick just to make sure. Um, it's crazy. Definitely crazy. I'm trying to see the 15. Give me a second. It's loading. There you go. So here go the 15 second one. Is at 62. So it's looking pretty good also. Um, look like it's right here at the support around a 184.40. Hopefully we get a nice little bounce again. But overall, you know, this is what happened with, with when you're, you know, timing and making sure that you're entering the trade on, at a nice point. You have to enter the trade at a good area. Um, is either at the bottom or is that a resistance point? So you had multiple opportunities to get into this trade. We had multiple updates on you know, notifying you guys. And I'm just going back over the same ones because I feel like these are going to be money makers in the next couple months. Um, and then from there, we'll find new trades going into June and July. But this is the highest volume trade. The implied volatility is extremely high. So that means all contracts is making money. You could have bought the $200 contractor down here I think it was around $30 and they're literally like $70, $80 now. So everything's making money from coming from gold. Um, I did the ETF, a penny stock, and I did the, the company, one of the mid caps, the one that Warren Buffett invested into um, back in 2020. So there, there you go, guys. Um, this is gold. That's pretty much it. I really ain't got much for Sunday session because I got the kids here and my wife at an event, but I'm just making it short and sweet. Go, Anybody got questions? Yeah, I got like a couple of uh, tickers that I put on the watch list. Um, I think one of them was... Uh, so we played X, I think, sometime last week, and you and I were chatting about it. Similar to the AA, um, uh, Seahawks has been playing forever. <laughs> um, there's another company Jay Fan was telling me about, which is STLD. Um, you want to look at X first or you want to look at X at STLD? No, 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 X is already played out. I mean, we're already in it. Uh, I'm not even trying to get back in the X again because that X can be funny, even but STLD, he was saying, um, when I was talking to Jay Fan, he actually knows the company and they they actually pay good dividend too. So if anyone wants to hold it, but it was, it was, um, so I was looking at it, it's almost similar to X, but. They they offer better services in terms of payment, and it just broke out. Similar thing, it just broke out from a monthly consolidation right there. Yeah, and you can see I had a chart for some reason. I don't know if I I don't know. <laughs> I asked you about it one time, Dave. I think you charted it up. Okay, okay, for sure. Been, yeah. been a while, been a while ago though. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But it broke out. Yeah, it doing good. From January twenty third, it went from fifty dollars all the way up to about. $77, did $25, $27 in the last two months. Yeah, I'll be watching this one. If he holds that level, that breakout with what's going on now, I think he's going to go even higher. But let's see. Then the other one is uh, HAL. Uh, it's uh, not one of the most popular all stocks. But... Um, uh, oh, how? Yeah, how. Yeah, it's bro broken above $32 resistance. Next spot, uh, spot I got is $38.82. On the one-week chart. I need to update these charts, man. Let me update this while waiting on Cam for a minute. 
So when you guys right, do, yeah, 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 I'm here. Oh, I'm, about to, I'm about to update it real quick, bro. I haven't updated my chart since uh, Miss Sparkle told me about this one. Yeah, when I look at all the all sector, everything has been booming. I looked at this one, I was like, hold up, this has not moved since. <laughs> so it must be the late bloomer, but um, it's one I'm definitely gonna watch on Monday. If he if he holds, if he holds that 34, I might get a 34 C. And uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe you'll get some sector movement or sector sympathy. You never know. But he hasn't moved. If you look at the remaining oil sector, they're almost at all-time high. This hasn't moved at all. So I think it's got some room there. Um, then the last one is uh, corn. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm still on how. Oh, okay. Still putting out. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, just re I'm just fixing it. I'm just trying to fix it up. Hurry up, bro. Yeah, it's above 30. That's the resistance on a one month. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. If he holds that resistance, that might be a good area to jump in. Let me see. Um, we at 34 right now? Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna hold for it. It's gonna hold thirty. Look for the test yeah. for the, the forty coming up soon. And then is that the forty? The forty C is where I pull out on the watch list as well. That's the target. You know, I'm not trying trying to make sure. You know, we're getting before you because it's already broken that support right there, that ton resistance, and it's moved from thirty four or thirty or so, and it's moving. What normally happens is once it touches that fourth, that once he holds that level, he's gonna try and retest the next level up. Which is around that 40 area. So let's see what happens there. Yeah, for sure. Huh? The last one is uh corn. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One minute. I'm almost done, bro. It's right. This is the one week right here on the pink line. Oh shoot, sorry. All right. oh, I need that too. I need to put that in there too. But yeah, the one week also look bullish. It's okay. Hey, hey. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh. I'm about to mute. Hold up. Go ahead with corn, bro. Yeah, corn is like wheat. That well, anyway, I don't know if anyone got that wheat at eight eight bucks. Now it's about twelve. I won't be surprised with what's going on in Ukraine. But corn is another one that is moving just like that one. But these are slow moving ones, and they you gotta be careful with these ones though. But but yeah, it's got a long way to go, man. The more they, the more Russia gets into Ukraine, the more corn and wheat becomes um, very scarce, and price will be going up. You see what's going on with oil right now? It's gonna be out now. I know a lot of people don't think about corn as something really big, but these are small ones, and Ukraine is massive on corn and wheat, actually. And, you know, all this bread and everything else. Bread is going to be going up. <laughs> Very soon, the price of bread is going to be going up, unless we find a solution to that. But corn is another big one in Ukraine where uh, we have to watch. I think when I first mentioned it, it was about 23 bucks, now it's about 26. Slowly moving. Nobody's looking at them because, uh, again, like I said, they're not really popular, right? But... Um, so yeah, just keep, keep that back of your mind as well if you're if you're looking for a slow moving trade. That's a good one right there. Yeah, those are the only three I'm watching this week. Unless something else comes up, you know. Um I'll put the levels out there and I think you're doing the same thing. Yeah. So let's see what happens. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate that, man. Y'all pay attention, man. Some some great trades been putting out. Um, just being consistent. I understand that you know we want to go look at trades that we're we're used to, but sometimes you got to move off of that stuff to make make money. Now, I mean, sometimes you know leaning on the one that you're used to. If you're not catching the right areas, or if you're not catching the great supports, it's gonna be difficult to gauge. But you know, overall, you know, if you, if you want them big trades, and while the trade that you're looking for not at its levels. Come all over, you know, come over to and pick up some of these trades that's, that's actually making a move until your stock get to your level. Sometimes we're forcing trades because we want it so bad because it's our stock, but it's okay to trade something in the meanwhile. Now, I mean, it's okay to catch a couple of trades in the meanwhile 
take advantage of those, and then you know, once come back to it when it's ready. That's why you set alerts. That's why you set price alerts. Um, we've seen that cat setting price alerts on cat was perfect around 180 or 181. You know, those contracts gave out you know 150 200 percent. So Does anyone have any questions? <laughs>